Ron, can I have your full name, where you're from, like specifically your block, your, you know, the borough of choice, like that kind of thing. And then what you do in just a few sentences. Um, so my name is Ron Rice the third. I'm from Harlem, New York, on the east side, 117th and Pleasant Avenue to be exact, um, right near the mall. Um, <laughs> so I'm like in the middle of like Wagner and Jeff projects. Okay. I'm like in the middle of the block. Um, and basically what I do, I'm a clothing brand owner, a mm -hmm. CEO, been doing this for about two years. It just hit the two year mark in January, started it when I was in college in my junior year. I was at a D2 school um, in Spring Hill College. Was there for two years. I had I went to JUCO for three years though, and then now I just I moved out to Tampa, Florida last year, and just moved into my office space just this year. Okay, well, congratulations on your office space. Uh, that's that's big time. Yeah. That's big time. So, and I was a, I mean I thought that was a pretty thorough introduction actually. So. I want to, so we know you as Ron, Mixed Emotion, clothing brand owner, like you go on your Instagram, you go like when you find, when you see you, you see Mixed Emotion, when you see Mixed Emotion, you see you. So, but I want to, I want to backtrack. I want to talk about young Ron. I want to talk about young Ron in Harlem growing up and what, I want you to talk about that environment. And I want you to talk about the emotions that come up when you're recalling that experience. Okay, yeah, so young Ron, um, <laughs> just uh, just basically any given day, we just chilling on the block with my friends. Um, I've been really been like Harlem. We just grew up around each other, like this, like we all lived on one block. So like every day, we'd just be chilling on the block, just wasting our time there. Like <laughs> like we was getting paid to be there. Like and you know, through being outside and stuff like that, you get involved in kind of different situations and you could just be a hooper and, and be at the wrong place, wrong time. And, you know, you see different things that happen and that kind of mold you. And I feel like, you know, especially for young black men, it's just like, you got, you cope through all this pain and, and everything. And it's like nobody there to like, you speak to. And it's like, you know, the first conversation you might talk to so is like, how you doing? And you, yeah, I'm fine. And you could be, I don't, it's been times I say I'm fine and I'm going through, you know, hell, you know what I mean? So, it was it was definitely tough growing up in Harlem and stuff, but I really feel like I wouldn't want it any other way because it mold me, you know, to the person I am now. Whether when when I was in school, being like you know, like I know coaches, they just love record like uh, recruiting New York play just be just because of their toughness, you know what I mean? So like, it just mold me to the person I am today. But yeah. Okay, so you talked about that toughness piece, and we're actually gonna, I'm gonna cycle back to the coaches, like recruiting and what it is to be somebody from New York City and how people perceive you. But first, I wanted to kind of talk, get a little bit deeper in that toughness piece of like, what other skills can you say that you're, um, I don't know, that you've embodied or that are instilled in you naturally just by living in New York. So like emotional kind of, I don't I don't know the exact word, but I, I feel it too. And Jayla, maybe you can attest to this as well. Like you, you always say you're fine. It's just a thing. So when people are, you know, consistently like trying to not pry for information, but like trying to get you to open up and be vulnerable, I feel like there's not a lot of space for vulnerability um, when you're growing up in the inner city or just the city in general, like there's so much going on and you're constantly, you're seeing things, you're hearing things that maybe kids shouldn't even see or hear and you, you don't necessarily know how to deal with it outside of just dealing with it. But outside of that emotional kind of resilience, toughness, what other skills do you feel like you have just because you grew up in New York? Um, I honestly think another skill would just be like a people's person, um, just kind of being around people and just having a good energy. Like I could go in a room and you're gonna feel me, like you're gonna feel my presence with it. I'm not gonna be the loudest in the thing. Or I might say a little joke here and there, but just having a personality, I think um, is definitely a good trait, you know, coming from it. Another thing would just be, like you said, like somewhat quiet in a way, as in like, I'm not too much going to just give you my whole story or I'm just not going to just, you know, like you got, I really got to feel your energy. I'm, I'm real big on energy and like, you know, and I take that with me anywhere I go now. Like I watch my surroundings. I'm very aware of things. I could 
pinpoint like situations before it's about to happen. Like, oh yeah, it's about, it's about to go down. Let me let me let me get up out of here and stuff. So <laughs> those are some things um I kind of kind of got from just being in New York some traits. That makes sense to me. Um, I didn't even I didn't even realize how um, important it was. Or I didn't even realize that I had that skill until I went to Indiana because I went to the University of Notre Dame first. And I'm quiet and I'm looking around. I'm trying to like read the room. I'm trying to gauge like what what everybody else's energy is. And that turned into me being, I mean, like arrogant in a way or like above superior or whatever so what do you do you think that part of our being observant and being super aware i mean you have to have it in order to survive in new york city like if you don't have it like you know you know what i'm saying like you're it's it's it might not be all good but to tie it into the piece that you talked about with the coaches like loving to recruit people from new york how does that all factor into it do you feel like there's some truth to you know what people say about like us being arrogant or you know feeling as though we're better or whatever I mean we're equipped with all of these things just from growing up in a specific place so how do you feel you know how do you feel about that that statement in general um it's funny you said I definitely kind of agree with it I think a lot of and I feel like it's really just having a chip on our shoulders you know what I mean and I know like just coming from, you know, the city, like we don't get these opportunities that a lot of people get, you know? So we walking in with a chip on our shoulder. I'm coming in the gym, like I'm a freshman and I'm trying to go at y'all, you know what I mean? Like, I don't care about none of that. Like, I don't care about none. So I definitely feel like that New York cockiness and stuff, it definitely plays a part in some, but I really feel like it's just, we ain't never had, like, we just got a chip on our shoulder, you know what I mean? And we're not going, you know, play with our opportunity, I would say. Okay, I like that answer, actually. So what is one, if you could point to any lesson that growing up in a city has taught you, like, it could be something real small or something that has changed your life completely, but what's one takeaway that you have? Like, you're, you're not there anymore, right? Like, you, you don't live there. You're, it's always a piece of you. It's always a piece of your heart. But when you get out of it, like, make it out of it you can kind of reflect and think like, man, okay, yeah, I learned all of that. You can articulate the fact that you're super aware of things or you're a people person because of all of the things that you've experienced or had to kind of navigate. But what's one of the lessons, or, I mean, it could be, you could give multiple lessons or whatever is, you know, it's your show, but that you can point to from, from your experience. Definitely. I would just, definitely, I would say like not taking taking life for granted you know what I mean because I feel like every given day you know we're not thankful of like I don't know like we just not aware like you just got another life to live you know another day to live and stuff and it's just like things just happen so fast you know and of course everybody kind of have their own thing going on or like who they lost or anybody like that but just taking life like more like just appreciating life more and um you know with me like moving um and stuff like that I kind of when as soon as I moved out of like New York, I got a, my own relationship with God, you know what I mean? And that was like real big for me. Um, Cause you know, like I was growing up, I used to go to church with my grandmother. I used to be forced to go to church every time. Like I'd be mad and stuff. And it was like, you know, they always like, you kind of like growing up, you just always like, like it's like thrown on you rather than, I felt like when I got my own relationship with him, it was way like, I, I was way locked in more, way better, more way, just a better person. You know what I mean? But to answer your question, I would think like, just don't take life for granted because it can happen so fast. So just try to appreciate life every day. Okay. So is that, is that lesson, if you could give one piece of advice to kids growing up in the city today, right now, who will watch this video, mm -hmm. this interview, is that what you would tell them? Um, I would tell them that. And then I would kind of tell them like, uh, you know, it's kind of cliche, but if I could do it, you could do it too. Like, as in like, don't wait until, don't keep procrastinating. And because a lot of people who have these skills and, and a lot of people have like this dream. And like, my biggest thing is like, don't lose your imagination. Don't lose your imagination because 
when you were a kid, you had this dream of being a cop. You had this kid of this, and that's what kept you going. So don't, when you get older and stuff, you lose that imagination. Like if I started off in a dorm room, you know what I mean? Like a little box dorm room. And I like told myself, like, I'm going to get rich off this. I'm a, in the first year, I like grew it to a six feet. Um, like during the pandemic, the whole world was going through COVID-19 and I was able to scale my brand to six figures. And then, you know, in one year and then the next year, I'm scaling it again. I'm, I'm on track to hit seven figures. So it's just like, you know, just to say that kind of motivation as in like, you can do it, you know what I mean? And don't wait and don't keep procrastinating. The hardest part is just going and do it. Whatever you want to do, if you want to do last year, you want to do play basketball, you want to anything, you know what I mean? Because you're going to keep waiting and there's a thousand people that start in a day. So you wait a whole year. Now you behind a hundred thousand people, you know what I mean? When you could already have some motion. So definitely, um, that's something that I would like uh, suggest for sure. Mm. I like that. There's, dreams are important. When we talk about it, like the city of dreams, New York City is, you know, all these things. And I, you, you hear it, but a lot of times when you're in it, you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. So it's important for people who are out of it or even people that are in it to say like, no, it's, it's actually that. But I even like I was away from home for like nine months. That was the longest I've ever been away from home because I didn't get to go back for Christmas. And I came back for two weeks. And I'm like, this is this is depressing. Like this is you see a lot of people struggling, just trying to make it. You see young people like our age who've been working since they were 12 and like scrape like scraping to get by and all those kinds of things. So if you're in survival mode, it's hard to dream but you still have to dream to get out of survival mode. So I think that is crucial. So we're gonna definitely talk about mixed emotion and starting in the dorm room. That's, we have to talk about it, of course. But I, I kind of wanted to backtrack on that dorm room piece. You went to college, you played college basketball. Mm -hmm. After kind of building yourself throughout high school, right? You no no offers like that's that's not how it started for you, and then you kind of made your made your way through it like that. But I wanted to kind of talk about your mindset shift because as athletes, all of, all three of us are athletes and did play and do play college basketball. You think I'm a basketball player? You identify as a basketball player. People ask you, "What do you do?" Oh, I play basketball. Like. <laughs> that's just what it is and yeah there's the athlete piece yeah there's that but it, I mean not the athlete the student piece but it's like that's secondary people say student athlete it typically becomes secondary if you're serious about it mm -hmm. so I wanted to talk about that what happened that changed your mind about it like that changed your identity that forced you to become somebody who's even thinking about starting a brand rather than just being a basketball player so um so when i was in juco i went to juco in nebraska right i was there for three years and with those three years um i had two knee surgeries and i didn't get to play until my final year so i had like basically redshirted like two years or whatever and you know throughout those knee injuries the doctor was saying like yo i don't know how much longer you're going to be able to play so reality hit you that like all right you know um I got to find something else. So I like, I got to find my passion, you know, in, in life or like, what else am I going to do? Because this seems like basketball is going to, you know, my end short for me, you know? So that was always in the back of my mind, but I really just needed ba basketball. I just say it's the platform. I feel like with basketball, you can network. I done networked and met so many people that have benefited my life. You know what I mean? So it was really dope how that happened. And then I honestly was just like, um, and um, to answer your question, mixed emotion kind of just came about with when I was in my dorm room and everything, I was at rock bottom at one point, like, because I went from JUCO to a university and like the JUCO work was a little more easier than like the, like I had more, because I had more like of a relationship with the professors and stuff, because it's a smaller class, you know, so I come to a university now and, you know, I don't got that same relationship. They don't know me. I'm not a person that's going to be in the class asking questions. So I kind of fall behind on schoolwork and stuff. And um, my coach was on me because like, you know, I'm a JUCO transfer. So it's like, yo, you need to come. I need you to impact right now. Like, I don't, you're not a freshman. Like you need to come in and stuff. So he was on my back. I'm, I'm, I'm failing school. You know what I mean? And then 
my father passes away as well. You know what I mean? So I got all this going on, you know what I mean? And it's like, and then like, I just started it like, it, like mixed emotions just came on my head. Like it was just like a no brainer. Like it's some people like take months and whatever to find a name or whatever. It just happened like so organic wise. But somebody was like, yo, what you gonna name it? I'm like, mixed emotions. <laughs> like I already knew the name, I don't know how. So, um, and that's just how it kind of really came about. And, um, that's really how it kind of came about. Okay. I like that. I can, ooh, I, it resonates with me, like 2020 in that span of things. Cause even in, even before COVID, like that was my red shirt year. And I was, I was having a hard time. Like my transfer was not smooth, like red shirt in. If you don't have to, like, if it's not because of an injury or it's like to transfer and have to redshirt is not a good situation. It's just not. You do all the dirty work, you do all the conditioning, lift, practice, you're on a scout team, you're on a practice team, you know, doing whatever, and you're just sitting down. Like, you can't compete, you can't play. You can compete in practice, but it's pra I mean, not that practice is important, but it's, it's different. So, 2020 was. Whew, I was hitting rock bottom too. I really was like even before the pandemic. So then bring in the pandemic and I lose three people, one of whom like two COVID and then another, my uncle, he passed away uh, from a massive heart attack. So I had to come back to the city. I was in Texas. I had to come back to the city and this is when there were portable morgues and all kinds of, all kinds of chaos. So I can, I can definitely attest to that. But that there's something special in all of that darkness right and all of the like in hitting rock bottom you can't go any further mm -hmm. that's it there's nowhere to go but up but you have to have the right mind frame for it so what stories or like what what was going on in your head when you were like outside of I'm gonna get rich off this, right? Mm -hmm. Outside of that, what were you telling yourself? Because it's it's something to say, like, I'm gonna get rich, like I'm gonna make money. But then there's a whole nother thing where that next day you're saying the same thing. And then the next week you gotta be saying the same thing the next month. So what do you what do you what are you telling Ron, right? To get out of that dark space and to move into like your season of abundance, right? Your season of like, no, this is this is what I want, this is what I'm gonna get. Um and that's just really like, uh, like I was saying, like just having that relationship with God, you know what I mean? I couldn't have do it. I couldn't have did it on my own, you know what I mean? And just building a better relationship with him and then just having a strong core behind me that's, that, that's rooting for me and still, you know, wanting me to pursue things and, and just being my backbone to things, you know, I, I really appreciate the people I, I'm around and they really kind of just helped me throughout the whole process. Um, but Really a mentally thing is like, yo, like you, you, you can't give up, bro. Like I done came through so much. Like I was in foster care. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, a, a child of the, the government. You know what I mean? I was in so foster care for a little bit. My, my aunt came and got me. And um, so it's like, I don't got nothing to lose. So it's like, you came so far. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to do this. Like this is just going to make the story even better when I could even present it like I'm doing now. Oh, so it's like, even just, better. I like that. Yeah, so it was definitely like just being mentally strong. Gotcha. Okay, so let's get let's get to it. Let's talk about the very beginning. A hundred hoodies in the dorm room. Mm -hmm. Emotion is ninety controls ninety percent of your decisions. You're not there anymore, right? You you're out of the dorm room. Uh, you're past a hundred. You scaled. You've you've done so much in the last two years and counting what has this process been like for you because i'm sure it's not easy like people you you see it online like oh yeah skill your brand it is or you know do all this clickbait like all these things and it's work like anything you do anything anything worth having doesn't come easy like that shit is real but what is how have you grown through it or how has it like forced you to grow it's been a crazy transition i mean so like i started in the dorm room right and then i started in the dorm room that year and then the next year I, I go home for the summer so i i bring all my stuff with me and stuff like that and then you know it's time to go back to school and now the whole summer i turned up i, I dropped these filling shorts i turned up i can't do it no more you know what I'm 
him, Dante. I mean, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he works for overtime now and stuff. So he, him and his girl basically hold my whole brand now. Like they had all little box. Like <laughs> he, he just hold, he held me down. He like, you know what? You know what I'm saying? Um, Kay, she was, uh, it was just COVID. So it was kind of hard to get a job or whatever. So he like, yo, just cut her some bread or whatever. We gonna hold you down. And he, they literally held me down a whole year. So like I was able, so it was so much easier for me because I was not so much hands on. So I'm just kind of doing the social media, trying to, you know, do the other things, marketing side of things. And it really helped me. I don't know if if they wouldn't have did it, I don't know what could have happened. Like it could have stopped, like honestly, because it would have just been too much going on. I was having dealing with so many orders, we was dropping, selling out every time. So it was shout out to um T and K for definitely holding it down for sure. Um but uh to answer your question again i'm, I'm kind of i think i went off track a little bit oh yeah no i mean it, that was perfect more than i even uh anticipated but no i was just asking like how have you grown through this because yeah, yeah you were doing the marketing yeah you weren't as hands-on but you were still very much a part of what you mm -hmm. created in the beginning uh so i just wanted to see like how that how that changed you how you you know how different you are from the wrong from two years ago yeah, so like it was really like, you know, like I didn't have no strategic plan when I was first starting, you know what I mean? I didn't have my own graphic designer, I didn't have my own bookkeeping, I didn't have an accountant. So I had to really go through a lot of things to like, I really need to like learn. So like in school, right? I was in school, my major was marketing management, right? So, but in school, I was just going through the process so I could play. I wasn't really processing learning. So like I had to really, go back and go to YouTube University and really relearn every, I really had to relearn everything. And it was like, once I'm reading, I'm like, once I'm hearing it and learning about it, I'm like, oh, this makes sense. I heard it. Oh, this is, I heard it. Is. So it was like, I really had to go back and learn everything again. And I feel like knowledge is key. You, you can, any, you could take everything from me, but my knowledge. I'm gonna always know, you know what I mean? So I just feel like knowledge is so important. And it's like, you gotta know the market. You gotta know, so much and that's what i kind of like had to double back and learn and start from there so okay yeah. i like that i think um youtube university is real it is a thing i am a fan i'm a proponent i go on youtube if there's ever a question i won't call my mother first i'm i'm going on youtube like that's just <laughs> that's just how it is and i think I think even having that mentality of like, I'm going to get it, like I need to know, I, I'm going to figure out a way, is it comes from literally, well, both playing basketball and being from New York. Like we are naturally independent. We start riding the trains at eight, like <laughs> younger than that, you know what I'm saying? Like just trying to, you know, get it on up to, okay, I got to do this, I got to do, you know, turn here, all this stuff. Like you start that young and we don't think about it because it's our normal. But a lot of people don't, when they have a problem and they, when there's something in front of them, some hurdle they're trying to overcome, they don't know what to do. They don't have that, figure it out. Like go find answers if you don't have any right now. So I definitely commend you for that. And I think it's, um, I mean, I think it's cool, honestly. I think being from New York is like, it's cool as shit. Like <laughs> whenever people ask me like, where are you from? I say it with pride. I used to have a certain level of not not shame, but there are a lot of negative things that people associate with New York City or being being a black person in New York City. Like there's there's a lot that comes with that. But now I'm like, yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Like I'm yes, 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 I am <laughs> from uptown, right? So um yeah, I, I think that's really cool. So um what is there anything that you can I mean you you've talked about we talked about your experience in New York. We talked about your experience in basketball, but is there any one thing that you can point to as far as being the CEO of Mixed Emotion, right? Like what in your experience has prepared you to do that, to, to not only maintain what you had already built, but to, to grow it? Like if this is not a, it's, it's not staying right here for the next however many years. No, you're trying to build um what can what can you say like is it is it your ambition is it 
um, just like that belief, that self-belief and like, I'm going to get it or I'm going to get rich off this. Like, what is it that is propelling you forward? Um, I really just want to say it's just hard work. Like, I'm really, if you know me, I'm a hard worker. I was never the most talented on the floor, was never the most talented in class, but I'm going to just work hard. You know what I mean? Like, for me to even get to college, I had to email a thousand schools. Like, I did that personally. Like, I wasn't blessed to wear, like, people was knocking down the door. So it was just always like a chip on my shoulder where like, I just had to work harder than people, you know what I mean? And, and that's what got me to where I'm at now. And then it's like understanding that you can't do everything alone. So like, I might, I'm not good with my numbers and data. And so I got somebody doing that for me. I'm not good with really doing Photoshop and everything. I got somebody doing that for me, you know what I mean? So it's just like building a team where it's like, everybody brings a different piece of value. You know what I mean? And that's what I think really got me to be in I'm still and I'm still learning day to day like how you know how to write us and, and everything goes and, and ends it out and, and stuff like that so I really would say like um yeah just having a, a, a good core group and stuff and just hard work just really hard work okay so what's next what's next for mixed emotion because we're running it up, right? Like it's not, you know, we're not, yeah. we're not, it's not, it's not comfortable yet. It's not, you can't just chill. So what's, what's coming up? What's coming out? What ideas? I mean, obviously you can't get too much because that's the whole mm -hmm. point of it, but just a little, a little sneak, sneak preview. So, um, what's coming next? So I just got my, like I said, I just got a thousand square feet uh, office space. So I'm looking to build my team more, get more people to do more fulfillments, marketing, everything like that. Um, I'm looking more towards doing some more retail. I got my stuff in one store, planning on getting some more stores um, throughout this year. And then what will be next? I wanna, I wanna, um, I wanna make a way to where I donate um, like a percentage of sales or something to a mental health organization. That's one of the, one of the bigger things I would like wanna accomplish. Cause I feel like now I'm at a point where I can like, you know, be able to do that. You know what I mean? And um, I keep uh, sponsoring. I, I did it last year. I sponsored my team with their home, with their own warmups. My old school got like their name on the back and stuff. Cause they like a D2. So they don't got like all of the funding, like how bigger schools got. So I'm planning on like kind of giving back to the, the teams and organizations that help me and stuff as much as possible. But for the most part, that's really it. And then, you know, in a day-to-day -day basis, just keep scaling and, and, and just trying to get 1% better. Um, I think a lot of people just want to just see uh, results the next day. They start yeah. their business, they want to see it in six months, they want to see it. And it's like, you know, you, you and I understand that because you get caught up in seeing everybody glamour and you see this person doing it, you've seen this person doing it, you know what I mean? But you got to wait your turn, you know what I mean? And, and be patient. A lot of people just want it when they want it. So that's why I always just say 1% better. 1% better every day. And then 100 days, you just got 100% better, you know, <laughs> whatever it could be. And, and, and honestly, just writing your goals out. Show, mm -hmm. seeing it, you need to see it. Like I'm a, and I, I even it'd be small goals. Like it don't be like crazy. Like I want to make a million dollars and nothing like that. It just be like, okay, I got to go to the dentist this week. I got to make sure yeah. I do this this week because I really need to see it because I've been doing so much and there'll be a lot going on and stuff to where like you got to really visualize your goals. Okay. You know I mean? Okay. So you said a couple of different things and my, my, my mind just goes in different places. I also need to write things down because if I don't, I'm liable to forget. I won't remember at all. Like if I got an appointment, I got to do this. So I, I definitely, and as far as goals are concerned, like, I don't know how I existed without them. Like I can't even imagine it now because there's so many things going on to where I it needs to all be there. But I wanted to ask you, because it ties into the mental health piece. So as someone who wants to kind of have a portion of uh, your sales go to a cause like that, can you talk about maybe just how not that it impacted you, but where you see the mental health realm like currently as it stands. Because you in the media, even with student athletes, especially now, like in this moment, people are like, oh my gosh, mental health crisis. And 
college athletics. It's been that way. Like it's been, it just so happens that we have more access to different people through social media channels. So, and I imagine that you have a personal connection to it and we talked about it, but I imagine you have like an even deeper personal connection to it that we didn't even cover. But what would you say to people who maybe find themselves in like, I don't know, maybe battling depression, right? Dealing with anxiety, um, dealing with all kinds of things that maybe were just brought into our airspace, like not by any fault of our own. Like you sometimes have traumas and experiences that just take you all kinds of places and you don't know how to, you get lost in that. So what would you, what would you tell those people? What I would tell those people, um, that's so tough. It's just like so much I can say, but it'd be like, you know, you're not alone. You're not alone. And, um, you know, like for me personally, like what makes emotion, it was like, this is something bigger to me. It wasn't never just like a goal to like get rich or just, it was, I was going through every piece of emotion that I put on my thing. I didn't went through it, whether it's depression, happy, sad, like mad, anything, you know what I mean? So it was like, it was bigger than me. And, and it's like, you know, whatever you're going through, it doesn't define you. It doesn't make you who you are. You know what I mean? Like you can overcome anything you want. And it's just like, it's really just, <clears throat> sorry, it's, it's, it's a tough topic for me. And I'm very passionate about it. And it's like with mental health and, you know, because like, you just never know what somebody's going through. You know what I mean? And it, it really just sucks, but um, you're just not alone. Like, and there's people there that can help. And cause it's like, what you're going through is don't, cause I know for like in a city and it's like, you know, black men or, you know, us like, we tend to think that things are just normal. You know what I mean? As in like, you know, God forbid your best friend could have died. And like, you know, you can go through trauma. Like you might need to see something. You've been with this man for 10, 15 years. You know what I mean? Like you might need to go talk to somebody to really get, cause you really going through it. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you're not alone. And it's not, it's okay to be not okay. Like it's okay to be not okay. Like, <laughs> so I would definitely um want to preach on that, you know, and it's just a tough topic. And like with my my statement, it's just like emotion control 90% of your decision. And with that being said, it's like, don't react so fast. Like, I mean, okay, somebody could have like cut in front of me while I drive and I get mad and want to throw a bottle at him. Boom, now I pull over, now we fighting. Woo, woo, woo. It's like, like really processing and understanding the situation before anything, because you don't, not every time you got to take it there. You know what I mean? Nip stuff in the butt. You, I'm not the toughest person in the world. I ain't, nah, you good, bro. I'm chilling today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm chilling, bro. Like, so it's just like, don't react off every emotion, like really process it and understand it and, and the situation before doing any action. You know what I mean? That is something we could all learn from um and it's, it's a tough thing to do i think a lot of times like even now as mental health is starting to kind of explode as far as like awareness is concerned and then people who are actually doing something about it like all of that there's still that piece of it like i feel all these things and i can't talk about it there's still that stigma there's still so many things that aren't being said and like lack of resources and then this is so much that goes into it. So it's really important that um, we speak on it, right? Like we open up about these struggles, even if they're um, still, like they still hit a nerve. Like I still talk about my experience in college and all that stuff. Like I didn't have a good college experience. And that is because like I dealt with crippling anxiety and you know, like depression, like these different things. And I can talk about them now, but there are still some things that just kind of trigger me like I there are triggers every day um but so I appreciate you for sharing for sharing all of that and this is the last question which is different so we're like switching gears completely so if I say Ron Rice is New York tough what does that mean to you um Ron Rice is New York tough um because he didn't he didn't make his environment an excuse. He didn't, I could have done said the worst of the worst, you know what I mean? Oh, I, you know, I didn't grow with my mother, like, you know, my dad died and, 
and I could have went a different route or I could have picked up something because I'm going through, I didn't make no excuse for it. Everything that I kind of went through, I put my, my head down and just kept going. You know what I mean? So that's what makes, I define Ron New York toughness. I was never the toughest, biggest guy in the crowd or whatever, but I just never gave up. You know what I mean? And, and put my head down and kept going and just didn't use my environment as an excuse. And that's the one. Okay, I like that. So that pretty much concludes the, damn, that was a good ass answer. <laughs> that pretty much the, I, do, I was thinking about that the whole time. Like, okay, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good one. I can't even lie, that's a sound bite. Like that's, yeah, that's that's good. Um, so that concludes like the, the heavy, the heavy stuff. So like these last couple of questions are meant to just be like fun. And Jalen's gonna ask you, uh, then it is supposed to be like lighthearted, kind of get to know you a little bit. And then if you want to throw anything in there, like don't feel like you just have to answer the question. If you want to throw some shit in there, feel free. But Jay, you got it. First of all, those are all amazing answers, bro. I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> if somebody don't learn from this, I don't, I don't know what they're doing, man. This is um, we come hard. This is the first episode. We we know what I'm saying. We come yeah, hard. You're setting the tone, bro. You definitely setting the tone. <laughs> um, like Jay said, these are all like lighthearted questions, just so you know the viewers can get to know you, how you go about your day, um, in New York City specifically. So um, we're gonna start off with New York summer or New York winter. New York summer for sure. Yeah, I have a feeling he's gonna say that. So take us through a, a New York summer day. Like you waking up, what you doing? So New York summer day, I'm probably waking up. I'm probably waking up a little late because I'm probably just out all night. Like I'm probably waking up like 12, right? you know what I'm saying? And as soon as I'm waking up, I'm then there put I'm getting ready to go back out. To, um, so I'm ready to just chill on the block and just see what happens that day. You know what I mean? Not really. Um maybe if I'm I'm hooping and stuff. Maybe I'll probably hoop, you know what I'm saying? And then come back from the gym and then just chill on the block <laughs> again and stuff. But that's really, but that's really much a pretty a New York day for me. Yeah, I got to agree there. Very random. You never know. Yeah. What you're <laughs> like, you just know what's going to happen. You can be like, sometimes you ain't never know if you're going to be able to hoop. Like, I don't know who got the gym today. I'm trying to wait on the call. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, next question, we're going to go high school or college basketball? I like I like I like my high school I like my high school uh, uh basketball for real. I like my high school basketball. Because okay. I got hurt and stuff in college. High school basketball. I was I was doing that. I, I was dunking. <laughs> yeah, I remember we, we hooped against each other a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're gonna keep it on that uh subject right there. You have a favorite player from the city? Outside yourself, because you know, you know, you got outside myself. myself. <laughs> um, outside myself, a favorite player from the city, and um, I ain't gonna lie. I jacked Hami. I jacked him because, like, you know what I'm saying. He had bounce. You know what I'm saying. I had bounce. Like, I just kind of, I rocked with his game for real. I, I jacked Hami for real. I jacked Hami. For sure, for sure. That's an interesting one right there. I like that one right there. Um, so you have a favorite place to go in the city? Like outside of like like not a place to eat, but like a place where you feel peaceful, you know, off your block. You can bring your friends, there's no beef going on, y'all just chilling, you know for sure it's gonna be a, a good vibe. A favorite spot? Uh man. Favorite spot. You said just we just chilling and like yeah, you know, just catching the vibe, like Soho or something like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. I would I would wanna say like probably like somewhere like we could shop, you know, get some drip and stuff. So definitely probably like Soho or something like that. Um I really like um to eat though. I really like sweet chips. Sweet chips down mm -hmm. there. Oh, Lalo. yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, we be had we had to take a trip down there and go get that. <laughs> yeah, see that's right in my neighborhood, so I'm yeah. I'm good. It's right there. <laughs> Um, this is a great question right here. Favorite song that embodies all of the New York energy? Favorite song that embodies New York energy? I really feel like, I really feel like 
welcome to the party. Like that, like little Leah, that time Dykeman's and all that. Yeah, that was active. That was, I would say, well, like if you put that on anybody, you want like no matter what race, anything, it could be like everybody going to jack welcome to the party. Yeah, I agree. For sure. I agree. Um, you mentioned Dykeman. I'm assuming that's your your favorite tournament in the city. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I like that kind of energy for sure. And yeah, of course, gonna happen there. Anybody show up. <laughs> um, all right. So the last question I got for you, bro, is name one or two people you think belong on this show. Somebody or people who embody the same mindset, same values. You know, ended up successful. You know, maybe a hooper, business person, anybody you think of? Um, could be a hooper, business person, anybody. Anybody you think is successful, who's made it out the city, um, you know, that just thinks that you think we could share some knowledge to our viewers. Mm, I like. I'm gonna try to give you like like one business person, then probably like a hooper or something like that. Uh, just to kind of split it up. Uh, I think I think Zay Wall should be a good person to come up here. Zay Wall, you know, he's been through, you know, some stuff with basketball career-wise and, you know, everything. I feel like he got a lot of knowledge he could give um, to the people um, on the business side of things. Um, on the business side, I'll pick a clothing brand, um, CJ, CJ Greatness. He got the Greatness, uh, the sparkle joints. CJ, um, that's my boy and stuff. He, he tough. He, he, he got some motion definitely going on. So he, he got some game for sure. And because he more different than me, because like me, I'm more so online kind of thing. And he really in a phase pop ups, like, so people would feel his energy. You feel me on some, like, people know, you know what I mean? So definitely feel like he'd be a good one. For yeah. sure. Okay, so you gotta you gotta put us on. Nah, yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. definitely. I'm a, um, I would definitely reach out to them and, and tell them for sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm, definitely. I'm gonna post this on like all the platforms, everything. It's, I'm turning it up for sure. Running it up, running right. it up. Before I before we kind of end the call, I just want to say you know um I appreciate y'all for having me on here. You know what I, I mean? This is my first take. I hope I did good. You know. You did um, great. <laughs> got doing is 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 unbelievable you know what i mean and, and coming up with this idea and i i just feel like and what with me is i always see the bigger things to think like i always see with with anybody with something like with with other what you're doing i always see something bigger so like mm-hmm. i see this becoming like way you know way bigger and, and, and grow more and then i feel like you know what I'm saying? My best advice to you uh, is just like keep learning and, and, and keep, you know, perfecting your craft. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like sometimes when I get comfortable or something like that, that's when I have my downfall. But yeah. just always keep working at it and, and keep learning and, you know, finding out the right cameras, the right this, the right that. For, you know what I mean? Anything. But I, like I said, again, I appreciate y'all so much. Um, definitely going to be tapping into all the episodes and stuff like that. And uh, I'm going to get y'all some gear, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know Jalen. I know Jalen got some gear, but I'm, yeah, you know I got it. So I'm gonna definitely get y'all some gear and stuff. Um, get, I'm gonna send y'all a DM and Bet. try to get that shit down and stuff. But again, I appreciate y'all. No, this is you, bro. Yeah, no, truly, it was amazing. Like I was, I told y'all, I was nervous. I was like, I don't know, I was gonna go. Like, I, you know, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable just like talking, but. You never know what people are gonna give, like what kind of answers, if they're gonna be thorough, if they're gonna be short with it, you gotta ask more questions. But you, I mean, you really did it. Like for it to be your first kind of go around, like you you, you set the bar, it's up here. So um, second, second guess definitely gonna have to match that energy, uh, exceed it if they can kind of thing. Um, but thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being so open and, and honest, I think uh, a lot of people sometimes with interviews try to make it sound, you know, better than it is or glamorous or they try to like you were real and, and you, definitely, you definitely get that. But um, is there anything else you wanted to add, Jalen or Ron? Like, is there anything else you want to kind of put on here to 
kind of cap off the the first first episode uh just thank you bro thank you for being vulnerable sharing a lot of kids are gonna learn bro i learned from you specifically learn from this series you know there's kids in the neighborhoods who've never seen like jay said never seen anybody successful outside of entertainment so mm -hmm. Opening their lenses, their points of views, seeing, changing their perspective is very important. So, and you did that with these answers, you hit the nail on the head, bro. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate. I was definitely trying. Definitely, um, next time I want to come, I probably want to come to New York if y'all got, you know, a setup and stuff like that. Oh, we need that. We need that. That's what it's loading. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I ain't been in New York since I moved, but for the right thing, for the right call. I, oh, yeah, we, I, yeah, I, we have to do that. Oh, man. <laughs> Just literally. Okay. okay, definitely bigger picture. Like, this isn't supposed to stay on Zoom. Like, it's not supposed to be none of that. It's supposed to, it's supposed to grow. It's supposed to uh, do all that. Because I'm like you in that way. And I feel like we're all kind of that way. Like, nah, let's, how far can, can we take it? Like, can, can we even do that? Like, let's find out. Yeah, definitely thing. but um if it don't work all you got to do is go back sit down and readjust things and try it again exactly there you go there you go trial and error but to conclude this show jay ron thank you um again and everybody show ron show mixed emotion some love i'll run it up you know that's that's the whole theme of it it's like run it up as, as much as you can but um yeah so that's it Appreciate it. Y'all have to do more. Yeah.